Um, we got about 70 attendees in person. We've been averaging about 50 thanks to COVID, but now we also have an additional 20 or so online. So we're glad to see these numbers are bumping up. Um, I've been informed though, we do have some developers that are gonna be on the call today from I believe California, Arizona, Florida. Um, I'm, I'm very proud to say that whenever Nick and I are out and about at different conferences, um, as soon as they say blooming to normal, they know exactly what's going on in our community. Um, so uh, thanks for all the headlines that's happening right now. Uh, but it's also, uh, it's great to be able to share this. And once we are done today, we'll publish this online on our YouTube channel. So anybody else that knows of any leads, developers, prospective businesses, please share this with them so they can realize all the activity that we have going on in our community. Uh, first, I wanna thank our sponsors, Illinois State University, um, Central Illinois Regional Airport, WGLT, Serban, Cumulus Radio with their uh, stations, uh, The Bull, Cities 92.9 and Magic 99.5. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Patrick Hoban. I've been with the company for now about two and a half years. It's, it's really hard to believe that that much time's gone by. And I'm proud to announce this is the first time that I actually have a full team. Uh, my team's in the back, we'll introduce them as we go through it. Uh, and some of you might not know, I was a football coach uh, back in the day. So whenever I was in Decatur, I volunteered for three years as a football coach, uh, pride myself in team building. I had everybody do the personality profiles and strength finders, and we found out that we mesh really well because if my team was all like me, we'd be in a lot of trouble. There'd be way too much data and analytics and not a lot of feelings or caring. So I've really balanced things <laughs> out with the team. Um, I got my uh, uh, degree in organizational leadership from Millican University. I ended up going through the economic development finance professional uh, designation from National Development Institute and also um, attended the University of Oklahoma, which our staff is attending now as well, um, so they can become certified economic developers. Uh, when I was hired in, my goal uh, that I had told uh, the board was I want to um, turn this into an EDC combine, where I want to kick out CEOs every five to 10 years. So every single one of our staff will become certified economic developers. And last but not least, uh, go Irish. I got my master's in business analytics from the University of Notre Dame, which is why I like doing the end by the numbers. So for this uh, theme for Q4, uh, the Olympics are coming up. So I thought, why not go ahead with the competition theme? Um, no competition, no progress. I think it's really important to focus on, you know, who you're competing with. And for us, now that we have a couple of years worth of data, we're really competing against ourselves. Um, we have a, a joke that whenever we're, we're working with our surrounding communities, actually somebody called the other day and said, you know, like, how big of a competition is it between you and Peoria for projects. And I said, I'm not concerned about Peoria. We're a team. Like we really market our region. I'm concerned with Chicagoland. I'm concerned with the Sunbelt states. Uh, whenever I'm working with the state of Illinois and it comes down to competition, it's, it's not really anyone in central Illinois because what's good for Peoria is good for us. Uh, we'll get into some of these numbers about some of the cross commuting that goes on and we really benefit each other. And that's part of our story whenever we sell blooming to normal. We'll follow the same formula. We'll go over the impact on what the numbers said about our last quarter, how we reacted during that quarter, and then what we're gonna do going forward in Q1. Um, so again, going off the quotes of uh, the Olympians coming up, and we're gonna start with impact. We'll talk about overall employment trends, and we have to look at two different numbers because there's the LAUS and the CES. One uh, determines the people that actually live and work here compared to people that live here and work somewhere else. Um, so this diagram will actually show the inflow and the outflow. So a little while ago, I had mentioned, you know, there's a lot of cross commuting between our communities. Um, this is uh, a little bit old data, but right now there's about 30,000 people that drive into our MSA every single day to work. Um, so we've used that in our commuting campaign. There's also a little bit over 20,000 that drive out every single day to work. Um, so that's what we do to promote central Illinois is all the cross commuting that takes place. The little circle in the middle, those are the people that live and work here. So first we're gonna talk about the LAUS, then this is the unemployment data, and this is based off of people that live in our area, regardless of where they work. So the unemployment number, um, it is calculation. You always want this to be low um, in some circumstances. Sometimes whenever you have higher unemployment, it's really easy to attract new businesses because you can actually break down the skill set and what industries this unemployment's in to bring in new people. Um, I'm glad to say, you know, compared to where we're at last year, we're heading in the right direction. And honestly, we've always been low, and you'll see it later on with the rate compared to um, other areas in the state of Illinois. Um, we expect this to continue to go down as well. 
um, employment, we finally got back above where we were at last year. Um, we expect this to go up. And when we get into the CES data, I'm gonna say the same thing. If you actually pull out the number for manufacturing, it still says we're only at 3,500 whenever it comes to manufacturing employment. Rivian alone has 4,200. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics has not caught up wage-wise or employment-wise to what's actually taking place in our community. And then the overall labor force. Uh, so labor force is finally above where it was last year. The important takeaway with labor force though, when it comes to employment and unemployment, it only measures the amount of people that are actually looking for work. There's another number most people don't talk about, and that's the, uh, the underemployment or the labor participation rate. And that's the amount of people between the ages of 16 all the way up, actually 16 and above, that are participating in your labor force. So the ratio itself, of course, is employed plus unemployed equals your labor force. You divide the unemployed by that to get the rate. And it is a ratio. And again, we're down at the bottom. We continue to be down at the bottom. I think Champaign might have a speed at 3.3%. Um, we're always well below the state. Uh, so again, this, this is a good thing. It shows that people that want to work can find positions. It is a challenge of whenever we do try to recruit new business in, and they all ask the same thing, and probably the same thing you're asking right now, where are my workers? We'll get into some of those strategies in a second. Now, the current employment statistics. We really focus on the current employment statistics because these are the jobs that are in our community. So this is the people that live and work here, plus the amount of people that drive in from Champaign, Peoria, Decatur, Springfield. This is our, our economy. Again, this is up. So we're finally beating where at last year, not quite to where we we're at um, before the pandemic, pre-pandemic levels. But again, that number for manufacturing is nowhere near what it needs to be. Um, I'm not sure when it's gonna catch up. I haven't seen a lag like this before, uh, but if you consider that Rivian has 4,200 employees, that's not even taking into consideration um, Ferrero or Brandt or Bridgestone or anyone else that makes, thing in this, makes things in this community, um, we're, we're well behind there. Um, so then we look at the uh, seasonally adjusted. This is something I had to do um, during the pandemic because we were so much lower, but even seasonally adjusted with our students, um, we're still above where we're at last year. So overall numbers are good. They're where we want them to be, uh, but we are running into a situation where we could have more workers here if we have more housing. And we'll talk about what we're doing that in a little bit as well. All right, the retail sales trends. Um, I can't explain this. So 2019, you see in the blue, up and down, everybody gets their tax returns around April, money starts coming in, everybody spends. Um, 2020, same thing. I don't know what happened this year. Like as soon as April hit, everyone started spending and they never stopped spending. This is a good thing. This, this is local dollars coming into the community. I, I just can't explain it. I don't know why it's so high. It's wonderful though, because that's what's uh, paying for your municipalities. Um, so keep spending locally. Uh, we like to see those numbers. But based off of this trend going on, this might be the new average going forward. And a lot of it probably has to do with all the new disposable income that's coming in um, based off of some of our new employers that are nobody likes to cook at home after the pandemic. They just <laughs> want to get out and about like you guys are. I can see that as well. I'm guilty. Um, investment wise. Uh, so last year, we ended up with a sum of 172 building permits for McLean County. This year, we're at 286. Like December came in and I was like, what the heck's going on now? And I, I said that we're probably not going to beat the total investment because of what was going on at Rivian and how big it was. And um, I'm correct. Yeah, they hit $290 million overall for our county. We still hit $168 million. So half a billion dollars close to it in two years is nothing to sneeze at. And I'm sure you've seen the plans for what else is going to be coming. Um, but with Ferrero, they just filed. Then also there's going to be new plans for another expansion out at Rivian that's public. Um, there's more in the pipeline, which we'll get into, but this isn't going to slow down anytime soon. And this is why we're happy to have um, our development friends over in California and Arizona and Florida paying attention um, to these investment numbers, because there's a lot of activity here. I believe uh, my time in the last couple of communities I was in combined, I mean, I was over there for 12 years total. We've already hit that in two years. So that if you guys want to do some kind of comparison of what's going on in other communities, this is unheard of and it's not going to slow down. So reaction wise, how did we react? Well, for the, anyone new to economic development, we do go off of a flywheel philosophy. And the, the concept is that if you have good resources that your local businesses will develop. And as long as they're developing, they'll invest back in the community, which gives us more tax dollars to put back into the resources. A great example of this is for adequate infrastructure. Um, 
our Connect Transit has got dollars to do a new Connect Transit Center. If there's a new Connect Transit Center, it benefits our skilled workforce. If we can get our workforce to work, businesses can expand. If they expand, more dollars coming in and it keeps going around in circles. The goal for us uh, early on was to identify out of all these bubbles, out of all these objectives, which ones do we want to spend our time on? Because our EDC, I mean, we're a staff of uh, five now, but still we can't spend all of these. So we rely heavily on the Chamber of Commerce, their CVB, our community partners to make sure that all these areas are covered. So for us, the three main focuses, which do take on a lot of the uh, bubbles that you see up here, um, we've got a real estate and development committee, uh, which Neil leads. I've got a lot of projects under that we'll go over. We have a business committee really focused on generating leads as far as who could expand locally, but also who we should be going after uh, complementary wise. And of course, workforce. I mean, every conversation I have right now revolves around workforce. We have to work really close with our partners to cover the entire workforce ecosystem here. So with it, you make a plan and you work the plan. We created a plan that's actually 20 initiatives. 15 of these are public. If anybody wants a copy of this afterwards, let me know, I'll get you this, but we're gonna go over and update on every single item um, on our strategic plan so far. And we did have to adjust, which is what you'll see in the red. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So number one, project management. That is the end of it all. Like everything that we do is to get to manage the projects. Uh, don't blame me for the cheesy names. That's Nick's fault. So he comes up with a lot of these. I saw Sheba on there and I was like, where'd that one come from? Um, but no, we get a lot of RFPs in or other businesses will contact us directly and they'll, they'll just ask like, hey, I'm looking for 50,000 square feet. And by the way, 50,000 square feet is a huge trend for us. We don't have a lot of buildings with 50,000 square feet. We'll probably end up doing a development summary that um, really gets into the square foot, the height, what kind of businesses that come in here that we can pass out to our developers because we're convinced that if somebody builds a 50 to 60,000 square foot building, we'll fill it pretty quick. Um, so overall for the year, uh, 2021, we ended up with 108 projects for the year. And I can say we've already had six projects coming that are brand new. And uh, one of those I know is over a billion dollars. So these things range from very small retailers. We don't really get into the housing game, but some are residential. Uh, but some of the other ones, uh, distribution wise, they can get pretty big. But overall 108, um, so our goal when I said competition, this is gonna be the standard going forward. We'd love to knock out 25 projects a quarter. Um, we track that as far as it being a lead, um, all the way getting to a face-to-face -face meeting, having them in town. Um, some of the partners that are in this room have met with some of these companies. And um, from there, hopefully we convert them and we can go out there for a, a golden shovel groundbreaking. That's the end game. But a lot of times that end game takes forever. I think contact that's out by the airport might've took six months. Um, I've worked on projects coming in at the tail end that took 12 years. And I, I, I know that we get a lot of questions, especially about a household name. What's the status of that? Um, we're in the waiting game right now. Like, like we do all the upfront work and it's really hurry up and wait. And what we can tell you from that one project is, well, I think it was covered in the, on the radio's article, um, they were very impressed with our community. You know, our biggest challenge right now, when it comes to competition, um, we were just on the phone with another one the other day, listening to what other states are doing, it's terrifying to me. Like I would love to go speak at their community and tell them there's no way you're gonna ever support a 40 year property tax abatement. That's what some communities are pushing. Other communities are offering $200 million in combination with the state to pull something off. My response to the prospect is you need to ask yourself what they're compensating for. They're trying to make up for something. Like we have to build with you because if you take 40 years of property tax abatement from a school district, your schools are not gonna keep up with the demand because these are large projects, over 2000 employees. I can't imagine locking up property taxes for 40 years and expecting the community to be able to provide the roads, the fire, the police, or the school services needed to support that. And so I wish them the best of luck if that's what they're trying to do, but in my world, that's not gonna fly. Um, our next thing that we do is taking care of our own businesses. Uh, Casey is with us today. Um, he is uh, really good at our business retention expansion. If anyone in here has not met with him yet, his goal is to really find out, well, first of all, thank you for doing business in Bloomington Normal. Um, see if you're in growth mode, and if not, what barriers are in the way. And right now, a couple of, or not a couple, but the main one is workforce. It's all trying to find out where are we gonna go get our workers from, which leads into some of our other initiatives. Um, but a big takeaway also is the induced impact. Uh, whenever we do an economic in, impact model, we look at the direct of employment for a company. So Rivian's supposed to have 4,200 employees now. Then we look at the indirect employment. That's anyone that's gonna supply them. And then the induced employment is all the 
butchers, the bakers, and the candlestick makers. And I'm sure if you've gone into a restaurant recently, that's why our sales are up so high. Um, so that induced has been huge. There's some companies doing very, very well thanks to all the new disposable income in our community. Um, but again, if you have not met with Casey yet, please schedule a meeting. Um, our, our biggest fear, and luckily, you know, we did catch one of these early, there was a company thinking about expanding. We don't wanna see one of our local companies expand or somebody open up a new shop or break ground without tapping into some of the incentives because we hear about it after the fact. They will say, why did this company get this? And we're like, actually you qualified, you just didn't know. So the whole goal of Casey is to get out, thank them for doing business and finding out how we can get investment to continue from within. Um, next on it is uh, developer retention and attraction. This is very important because if we're doing the uh, matchmaking game, playing information broker, we need to know all the available properties in town, even your pocket listings. Um, there's plenty of times if the right deal comes around, we can move some things around for some of these uh, developers that come in. We have hosted a couple of familiarization tours. We call them FAM tours. Um, and also Nick has gone to some conferences and uh, to sell the area as well. Um, thanks to our partners over at uh, Wabash Valley and Corn Belt. Um, but it, it's, it's really helping us out to get more contacts in. So at the end of last year, we create this entire list. Uh, we create lumpy mail. The year before we sent out six packs of beer. Probably won't that do that again. A couple of them exploded and we got them back. So we'll, uh, we'll stick with the uh, chocolates from Ferrero. And then also we send out spicy beer nuts and we've had a little letter about how our economy is heating up. There's a QR code, I'll do dad jokes all day. So that's definitely worked in there. But we had a QR code in there that so that they could scan it and then get more information later. So we're automatically getting them to sign up for more newsletters. Uh, business attraction wise, <clears throat> this is what I get to do, which is a lot of fun. Um, in December, we actually bounced around quite a bit. Um, again, going to consultants forums, um, there's a Mid-America real estate conference that's really big. And thankfully, because COVID is going down, there's probably one of these every other month this year. So I will be out and about spreading the good word as far as what's going on in our community, um, developing those relationships. And the beauty of it is a lot of the people that do come in town for the familiarization tours, I've actually met at these conferences. So they already know me and I get a bug them and I'm like, hey, what's going on with this project? Um, hopefully I can get a couple of drinks in them and get more information and get the truth. But it's, it's, a, it's a great process. It's nice to know that as we build these relationships, they're going to give us the truth outside of what they're saying inside of a meeting. And that's why it's so important to uh, be out and about. Um, standardized incentive wise, I just followed up with this one this morning. Um, the state, we're hoping in about two weeks, we're gonna have a finalized decision on getting this standardized um, for the first time in, what'd you say, Mike, eight to 10 years this has been going on? Longer than that. <laughs> so we're, we're getting close to the finish line. Now it has been approved by all of our local bodies. Um, once we get it from DCO, this is gonna help out a ton of speed up projects then also getting in front of our school districts and other community partners such as CIRA. Uh, but this is the one that really levels the playing field that says, if you do A, you get B. Um, it, it really just streamlines everything uh, because we do get asked, uh, you know, how long is this gonna take? And sometimes, I don't know, six months, how many taxing bodies, we don't know. Now everybody knows what the game is. You know, you can tell anyone in the real estate world, if you invest X here, you're gonna get this deal. So I think it's gonna help, makes, make, makes my job a heck of a lot easier. Um, one voice. This is one, I think, just last week, or no, this, this week, we decided we are going to go. So it was one that was up in the air because we've been told that the staffers of the uh, federal agencies aren't allowed to meet with people in person right now. Um, I, last December, got to go out to D.C. as a part of a, a group for the International Economic Development Council. We could not go to their facilities, but we had one big conference room like this, and they came to us. Um, so we're hoping we can do the same. I think February 1st, the mayor is supposed to decide if they lift the mask mandate. If that happens, hopefully it'll free some things up. Um, the main reason that we're gonna go forward with going out there is because we're on the hook for $17,000 because we booked the rooms and the restaurant. And um, I can eat a lot of pasta, but yeah. probably not that much worth. Um, so bottom line, we already spent the dollars. We asked our development committee, should we go ahead and take the risk of we could possibly zoom from out there, but we have spent the dollars. Uh, but the, the main focus, though, is we do this because it does bring dollars back to our community. That, that's the main goal. And our three project this year is going to be our bin word upgrades. So that is, uh, I know sewer is not that sexy because it's out of sight and out of mind. But as you saw last year, it's very, very important. And if we want to land some of these massive projects that are coming in, there's some pretty heavy water users. We have to increase our capacity when it comes to sewers. Um, that's looking to be close to a $200 million upgrade. Because if you've ever driven by our plants, 
they're pretty dated. Uh, the good news is there are programs coming out now to help out with that. Um, the other one is our uh, Heartland Community College uh, Manufacturing Academy. I'm sure you're well aware of the EVES program that'll help out with energy or electric vehicles, energy storage. However, there's a lot more manufacturing that we can do. And I'm glad that manufacturing is on the rise here. And we wanna encourage that. Um, so when it comes to workforce, uh, being a community college kid myself, I wanna see more opportunities, more funding to help those students move their way up from a former bartender to a CEO. There is a way to do it you know, with the right program. So we're hoping to get some more dollars for them. And last but not least, uh, this actually builds off of a program later on. Um, our friends at CIRA have an opportunity to um, increase some road access um, off of Airport Road, which would really open that up for development, especially since we all love to shop online now. Um, could be a great opportunity for some cold storage. Uh, so if you're going to be getting your food on demand, same day delivery, there could be a, some sort of a distribution park right there. So we're hoping that road access will increase the value of that land. Not just food, but also flowers with Valentine's Day coming up. Um, it'd be nice to have as well. The other one that we do uh, for workforce is our BN uh, STEM. And the STEM initiative is broken into three categories right now. The Heat Academy, BN Explorer, and the Loop. Um, all not as viable as we want them to be right now because of COVID. Uh, the Loop is where we'd actually get, or our consultant would take teachers out to um, different industries so they can you know, line up a lesson with what's going on in the real world, not just in the textbook. Um, hopefully as COVID slowly goes away, we'll get back into that. But if you want any more information on STEM, please check out bnstem.org. Um, workforce attraction wise, this was the idea that we had that we're gonna go attract all of our uh, alumni and bring them home. And then we ran out of houses. So <laughs> we converted this into a commuting campaign uh, to the chagrin of all of our surrounding areas. Because you know, I always joked, I'm not gonna take your businesses, but I'm coming for your talent. And um, right now, I'm sure, I'm not sure. Have you guys seen the ad at all? Um, the ad is running on Facebook, YouTube. Um, if you haven't actually, I think I might have it up. As long as this doesn't get in the way. Yeah, there we go. We can run this. If you're looking for higher wages and better job opportunities, you belong in Bloomington Normal. Join over 30,000 Central Illinois commuters who drive here for work every day. Hundreds of companies from State Farm to Beer Nuts are hiring, and we have over 3,000 entry-level, mid-level, and senior-level positions available in manufacturing, nursing, customer service, and more. To learn more and request our HR pros contact you, visit bnadvantage.com slash commute. So whenever they go on that site, um, there is a sign-up form on there and a guide that they can follow, but we've been able to capture leads. And I think so far we've had about a hundred people. That's not good. Fun autoplay commercials. Thank you, YouTube. Um, but anyway, on beingadvantage.commute, there is this guide that's off to the side and you can sign up. Um, from there, they go into a database of ours and we send that out to local HR professionals, headhunters, um, based off of the industry that they select. Some people will say they want to work in office, others say manufacturing, we make that connection um, so we can show a direct return. That commercial in the campaign itself was actually uh, helped out by the Panagraph. We partnered with them on that and it was a three month campaign. We're getting our final numbers in to see how much traction there was, but it was just a way for us to say, there are 30,000 people already doing this. We need to increase commuting and uh, we've got opportunity here, which I'm sure a lot of you realize how much opportunity there is. Um, the next one, there's so many grants coming out right now, we had to do a grant matching system. So on the very top of bnbiz.org, there is a link to sign up, but also a phone number, because originally I don't want to help everybody fill out their grants. Um, Casey's actually really good at that, but I don't think he wants to help everybody out as well. We'll help out how we can, but we have uh, grant writers that are actually on hire, so they can call this. Um, we can get an application and they will help them go through the process of applying for all the funds that are currently available and coming soon. Um, the next one is economic gardening. I know that uh, the Chamber of Commerce is actually putting together a team as well that can help out with this. We have dollars available. So if you know any company that could grow from within and needs some consulting help, we have dollars to pay for the consultants to help the companies grow from within. Um, so it's a really unique way to help out our local uh, companies. We ended up doing one company last year, not as many as that we had hoped. So we ended up shrinking the line item in the budget, but there are dollars allocated this year. So if you know of any companies that need help, whether it's uh, marketing, strategic planning, financing, um, let us know, get a hold of the chamber as well, because they've got a lot of uh, um, consultants lined up and we'll pay for it and hopefully get some growth from within. Um, the next one, the Rural Development Fellowship over at ISU Stevenson Center, this is back on. So originally we had planned to partner with Heartland Community College. 
go after some state funds to line it up for a full-time position. Um, we did not end up getting the funding for that. So this year, um, Casey is actually a Stevenson Center fellow as well. So he customized the application to hopefully make it more enticing than what I applied for. And we'll get somebody in there. Um, but it'll, it'll be great to get out more into rural communities and actually teach somebody from the Stevenson Center of Community and Economic Development, economic development. It'd be nice to get them in there to see how it actually works compared to what the textbooks would say. Um, the next one we got for virtual tours, another line item to try to really pump some areas. Um, we're partnering with CIRA and Corn Belt, and we're gonna end up hiring Research FDI. Um, this is a company that will come in and run the analytics to say, will a certain type of industry work in your community? We're pretty positive that cold storage will work in this community. So what we want to do is hire them to come in, not only do the economic impact to say, will this work here? But then afterwards, they actually line up leads that are in the industry to play matchmaker so that we get to go pitch them and try to bring that in. I have never done this for cold storage. I have done it successfully with retail. So there's matchmakers that are out there and they play both sides of the fence. That's exactly what these guys do. Um, so we're working on a contract now. We've uh, reviewed the company. I think we're good to go and hopefully have an announcement really soon with a press release on how this is gonna work. Um, it'll run through us. I think it's gonna be a great opportunity um, to really uh, customize that one area for cold storage. Um, next one, this is a big one. And so glad Whitney just started and she's drinking from a fire hose right now on everything that we do down the rabbit hole of economic developments. But community vision was at the bottom um, for a reason, because it is a very, very heavy lift. This will be the third community I've been a part of that has created a brand. And we need a brand because we're blooming to normal, but there's nothing really that goes with that. Um, I'm going to ask you later for a little bit of homework. Um, but before we got started on this, um, the board decided to allocate funds to hire another staff member. And so we hired Whitney Cheshire, and she's going to be our community marketing manager, because the last thing that I want to do is hire a consultant to come in and uh, give us a brand and have it sit on a shelf. So we need to make sure that whatever we, whatever we become, that we continue to sell that, educate that, and push out information. So it's going to be Whitney's uh, full-time job. We also have a marketing intern, uh, Jennifer Coe, who will assist as well, because when it comes to social media, it's all about content. So we're going to need content from everybody. We want to tell stories about what it's like to work at your company. We also want to tell stories about why you like living here. So hopefully all that combined will give us more information to share at the EDC from a business point of view, but also from whatever this new brand is on why people love to live, work, and play here. Um, one of the last ones on here is our Smart City Initiative. Uh, this is a major partnership with the town, the city, the county, uh, all the educational institutions. Our big role in this was to stand up a website. So there's a draft website that's available right now at bninnovationalliance.com. This is important to us because it falls underneath the infrastructure category. Um, if we don't have the infrastructure in place to handle um, all the new tech that's coming to town, and there's more, let alone some of the vehicles that are around here, or the students, if any of you have a student like I have a daughter at ISU, I can't believe the amount of live streaming and data that she uses. If we don't have the infrastructure in place to handle that, um, we're going to be behind. Luckily, we do have a lot of that right now. And if anyone wants a speaker, I'll volunteer Jamie to go give that presentation. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but uh, Innovation Alliance is a place you can get a little bit of background on it. Um, and it is it's a little bit of its infancy stage, but they're starting to come up with new projects. And we are going to stand up social media as well to start sharing um, more communication about what's going on there. And then the last one is a boring slide for a reason. And it's sad because it's on hold. Um, so entrepreneurship was one that we did have funding for last year. We planned to launch into. And luckily for me, uh, the board basically stepped in and said, Patrick, pump the brakes. Like you've got way too much going on for Q1. Get the branding out of the way before we move forward with entrepreneurship. Um, we've got a great SBDC at Illinois Wesleyan. We've got good partners at ISU um, trying to do the same thing with Innovation Hub. Like that, it needs to be done. Um, but right now it is number 15 on our priority list. So we're hopefully going to end up getting the vision done. I'll go into that process in a little bit. And then as soon as that's done this summer, we can relaunch entrepreneurship. The fear is if we try to do everything, it's not going to be as good as it could be if you're hyper-focused. Um, so entrepreneurship is on hold right now. So ADAPT going forward. Um, number one, workforce strategic plan. Uh, Charlie over the chamber brought us all back together to say, hey gang, we created this you know, awesome system. We know who's doing what. We're actually finding more. Um, but we really need to take a deeper dive into this. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Miro board, which I could probably share a link to as well. If you guys want to take a deeper dive. 
Um, so the Miro system, if you guys haven't used it, is, uh, is pretty cool, but it's a way that we can all virtually get together and try to describe whenever you know I got here, I was asking everybody, all right, we have talent in this community, we have jobs in this community, how do we connect them and who's involved in the process? Um, we identified these partners, uh, brought most of them in to talk about how they actually connect them. And after we figured that out, we went ahead and mapped them out into this great game board, which could probably be an actual board game at some point. Um, but it'll walk you through all the different levels of workforce. So you've got workforce readiness, where you take through your K through eight through high school, a lot of programs for that. After that, there's the community college for upskilling, then also ISU and Wesleyan. From there, you've got all the different services broken down into three groups, but you've got your manufacturers, you've got your trades and transportation in between, the people that move things around, and then all of their services. And then those are broken down by actual employment, by age and everything else. The idea was to figure out how do we help different people out? So on this little journey, this is a recent high school graduate, and they're gonna come out and probably their parents are gonna say, you need to get a four-year degree or you're not gonna amount to anything. We all know that's not true these days. There are other routes to take. So for us, we want to be able to map out the entire quad of the different routes that are available. So in this example, it takes that same framework that we have more in animation. We plan on making these videos with voiceovers um, with the idea of laying out all the guides in between. And if you guys go back to that sticky note thing that was done, those are all different programs that are available. The challenge is we don't have one pagers on every single one of those flyers, so we can't actually um, describe all the programs, but we do make the handoffs, we make the connections. So whenever Casey's out talking to a business, um, a lot of times they'll say, I'm thinking about hiring a certain amount of people. And luckily for us, we have a state employee in our office, Lauren Gibson, who can actually help them out apply for those programs as well. Um, there's a lot of training dollars that are allocated when it comes to workforce um, that runs directly through our local career link. Um, so, like, again, when I came here, I was asking people where the system's at. We're slowly mapping it out. It's mapped out now. Now we just have to do a better job explaining what those programs are with hopes of creating an actual guide itself. So the next steps on that will be to create our current state guide, have tear sheets, not only for our businesses, so they know all the programs, but that our talent has the tear sheets as well come up with the different personas of who could be on that quest, whether it is a former bartender that's been in community college for 10 years um, to know what programs he could get to go work at Rivian because there's plenty now. Um, come up with a common vocabulary. In economic development, we have our own terms. Education has their own terms. Um, and then the state of Illinois and the feds have theirs as well. And they don't always line up. So coming up with that and then um, having a website that outlines it all and uh, adding other participants. Because the longer we do this, we find out about other really faith-based um, workforce development programs that are out there as well. Um, but we need to bring in our union partners with labor because they've got tons of programs. We're, we're all, we all have opportunity here. And I think there's a lot of kids that are underemployed that if they knew the opportunity and actually could see the light at the end of the tunnel would probably join some of those. That, that was my thing when I was bartending. I never thought that the real job amounted to anything. Um, but once I saw this path, then I took it. But the thing is we've got opportunity. We can job shadow people. We can create a guide. And we can help, we can pay for them to go to school. That's, that's what's disappointing. Whenever we know there's state dollars available being underutilized, um, we want to be able to help people upskill and find the right jobs. Now, the next one, talking about workforce, um, we've heard from multiple people that they would take jobs here if they could find somewhere to live. Um, talking with Neil, there is a lot of housing um, projects going on. They're the similar housing projects that are continuing from before. I live in one of those developments. I've got a school right next to me out in the middle of cornfield. I would love to see that completely developed. The thing is we have to have a variety of housing. We have to have more of that housing. That's great for me and my family, but we need to have housing that's available for some of the new people that are moving in from the East Coast and West Coast that want planned walkable communities. We've had developers in, there's probably some developers online right now um, that are looking at the same thing and they hear the stories. They, they talk to, um, country financial, they talk to the young professionals over at State Farm and Rivian, and they hear that, yes, we, we're willing to pay higher prices. However, if you go on to Bureau of Labor Statistics and you look at the numbers, it hasn't caught up yet. The numbers haven't caught up to what we're selling our homes for or what rent is right now. So whenever I talk to a developer and I tell them these stories, they're like, it sounds great, but I'm looking at your rental rates right now, and that's not going to match what we have. And I'm like, well, take out the student housing because that, that's not the same type of rental rate. And also the jobs, they're not caught up. Like Rivian's starting at 20, 21 an hour. It's, it's not there yet. So they don't actually see your disposable income or know what the demand is. 
So we're partnering with regional planning, Ameren, and the Chamber of Commerce to hire development strategies to come in out of St. Louis to do a housing study that's really going to identify what the real rents could be, what the demand is in the variety of the property, um, so we can get some of this development going on. Because we've had developers come to us and say, we could build this, but I can't take your anecdotal stories to the bank. So hopefully this is going to give them the data they need to take it to the bank and we can start diversifying our housing. A lot of opportunity for multiple levels. Like I said, again, family homes like I've got out in our subdivisions, but also some infill. The big one, community branding. Um, we've hired DCI. I do have their full proposal um, based off of time. We'll see how far we can go into it. This is a five month process, um, different phases. Uh, we're going to start with them, I think February 3rd is the first kickoff meeting, Whitney and I to talk out um, what this is gonna be and how we're gonna line up all these focus groups. We wanna hear from as many people as possible. The last thing we wanna do is create a brand that was for one segment of our community. We need to hear from everybody. And I know from doing this before, we're not gonna make everybody happy, um, but we have to get as many focus groups. So anybody that's willing to volunteer for this, please follow up afterwards. Um, we wanna have a survey done. The chamber has already started one um, with their uh, leadership in Lafayette County group. They've got some responses back already, uh, but really it's just finding out what this place means to us and how they can craft that into a message. Um, so from the SWOT analysis to focus groups, uh, moving into brand positioning and the statements, hopefully getting a good message. My biggest fear with this is having something that I don't believe. I think they gave us uh, three strikes and you're out type deal. So we'll make these pitches and we'll fine tune it. Um, but they coming up with a branding guideline after that, and then we're gonna launch it. And based off of COVID will be how big the launch is. Hopefully it'll be a really cool launch and you guys will all buy in. Like, I don't wanna stand up there and sell you something like Steve Jobs and everybody gives me a thumbs down. Nice try. Um, but yeah, this is, this, is a, this is a terrifying adventure here, but it's something that we definitely need. And I'll, I'll tell you a story. Hopefully the media doesn't repeat this, um, but it, there's been times before where we've been in a group and we're pitching our community and they say, what do you call yourselves? And everybody says something different. I'm like, how am I supposed to sell that? Are we Bloomington normal? Are we blow no? I hate blow no. No, we're normal Bloomington. And everybody laughs. I'm like, we got to have a brand. So we all have, have to come together off of something. So DCI is known for doing that. And yeah, I've got this already up. So some of the other examples is a little bit of a teaser of what they've done for other communities. Um, it's not just the logo. There is a whole book and guidelines that go along with this. If you wanna check out any of these other ones, uh, they've got some great brands. Uh, but that, that's why we want them because that's what these guys do. They're known for doing this. They've represented over 500 different places. Um, we're gonna go with the experts. It's not something that I wanna lead. It's something that someone else has to come and facilitate. Then once we're done with it, we're gonna keep it going. Um, but we are looking forward to this. All right. Yeah, based off of time. How you can help. Um, first of all, I'll repeat this. If you have not met with Casey, please meet with Casey. We want to make sure you know about all of our programs and how you can get involved, especially when it comes to some of the workforce initiatives. Um, if you have property or if you know of property or if you know of any projects, please get a hold of Nick because we play matchmaker. If we don't have the property in the system, you're missing out right now because we get RFPs. Like I said, we've already had six this year. If they're asking for a certain amount of square footage and you have it, but we don't know about it, you're missing out on opportunities. So please get a hold of Nick with your properties. Um, if you want to be on our podcast, we've got a Building BN podcast. We're looking for guests or you want to get involved with the branding campaign, please get a hold of Whitney. Um, she's in the back and hopefully everybody says hi on your way out. And also you want to join a committee, um, please get a hold of Stephanie. She's here today as well. It's our office manager who keeps me balanced and also in line, um, which is important. Um, a lot of committee opportunities, especially when it comes to branding as well coming up. And then for me, we do have some new investor perks. Um, if you don't wanna wait for the quarterly economic update, but you wanna get your monthly updates, right now our board gets weekly updates. We're gonna fine tune the information and come up with some perks. One of the perks I think is a lunch with me. I don't think that's very valuable, but I thought it was kind of funny they put that in there. Um, I'll basically have beers with anybody. I mean, Brad knows that, so call me and we can go talk shop. Um, all we're saying is that there's different opportunities uh, to be a part of what we're doing now. And the more we can do, and the more investors we have, the more people we can hire to expand on some of these other initiatives. All right, the last couple of times I've done this, I've asked you guys for questions and it's been crickets. So now I'm gonna ask you a question instead. Uh, so to kickstart this branding thing, how do you describe Bloomington Normal? It's crickets again, come on. Charlie, you do this for a living. What? Diamond in the rough. 
That is a good one. So I'm, I'm, I'm repeating everything that people are saying because we're recording this. So I'm going to log it later on, or Stephanie is, but somebody will log it. Small city, big city. Small city, big city feel. I can see that. Oh. It is home. Yep. Great place to raise a family. That's been the tagline. That has definitely been the tagline. And that's one where we got to expand on that a little bit. Because I mean, ideally, I can go get more people that want to raise a family here. Now, that's what we've been doing. I think we're shifting right now. Because if you look at the talent that's coming in at Rivian, and even Ferrero, just go hang out at a coffee shop, um, actually right across the street and see people loading onto those buses every single day. We're getting a little younger. And I'm not sure they want to hear us say it's a great place to raise a family because they haven't got married yet. So if we can have a subcommittee offline, do not write this press that gets people married. Yeah, we'll get them to stick around and continue that. I'm not starting that initiative, but if anybody, if anybody wants to join that Blue Ribbon Committee, go talk to Charlie. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, this is gonna be very important. Like we, we need the feedback and there's gonna be a variety of ways that we do this, whether it's via surveys, round tables, it's gonna be hard. I mean, I almost liken it to Chicago in the good ways because Chicago has different neighborhoods and every neighborhood has a different vibe. Like I live out in the den. It's totally different out there than it is in uptown normal. Downtown is different than uptown. You know, there, there's, there's college fields for sure. And that's really good energy. We've got some cool industrial sectors going on. And then we've got like retail row. So I, that might be what the strength is. If it's a little bit of something for everybody, I don't know how to capture it. Um, I think whenever Whitney started the first day, we we're like, so what do you like about this place? She's like, I don't know, there's just some kind of an electric feel. And I'm like, ooh, that, that's a good song. I checked to see if we can get it, but some other car already took the song. But no, it's, it's gotta be something like that. There's gotta be something that captures the energy that's happening right now. Um, we were ranked happiest place in America. Um, I do use that when I'm talking to people and they're like, okay, go ahead and explain what that means. Um, that's good with them as an attention getter, but there, there has to be something that captures everything that we are. And uh, we're gonna need all of your help to do that. Um, so with that, I will, yep, 40 minute mark on the nose. I will take questions if anybody has any. Yes, sir. Yes. So the big why right now is for the first time ever, um, reshoring is higher than foreign direct investment. We used to get a lot of foreign direct investment and our companies used to expand overseas. Well, based off the supply chain issues, people said, nope, we're coming home. We're not dealing with that again. Because of the workforce issue as well, people are, this is just here, it's nationwide, the workforce issue. They're really investing in automation. And so if they're investing in automation, they're looking at places that have affordable power, low cost of doing business, which puts us at the top of all the states. We have really low cost of land, low cost of doing business, but also very affordable power. So if people are looking at automation, I mean, there's a reason if you look at the Ferrero project, that's a $75 million deal that's creating about 50 jobs. That's a lot of investment in machinery and equipment. So we're gonna see more of that coming here. And if you go through that list, um, I don't know if you caught it before, a lot of manufacturing. A lot of manufacturing is kicking tires. And I love manufacturing because manufacturing has suppliers and buyers that come with it. I mean, you have some companies that come in and they're really known for the one thing that they do. Um, think about a data center. Data centers are awesome for school districts and property taxes. They don't employ that many people. They do pay really well. They're massive investments. Not a lot of suppliers and buyers outside of your electricity and your utilities. But if people are making things, they're bringing things in, they're sending things out, we can bring that whole system here. And that's a lot of the manufacturing that we're seeing right now. So we'll take manufacturing all day because it's got a higher multiplier for those direct, indirect, and induced jobs because how well that they pay. So a lot of it is more manufacturing. We're getting some more on distribution. We'll probably see that continue um, once the Wildwood property doubles in size. Now you got a million square feet and people break that mold that says you have to do distribution on I-80, which is what you're doing now. When they see that you can do it down here and you, know, you can actually go a mile a minute compared to up there, I mean, who knows how long it takes you. I know personally trying to get out of Soldier Field, but yeah, you, you can ship things out of here. My fear is where those go because there has been a trend and we've had calls on this where people say, hey, what are you doing with that mall? And I'm looking at them, I'm like, you do distribution, we're not talking to you. Like, I don't want trucks coming out of the mall. You know, they have to be on the outskirts and stay outside of our belt. That's where you want them. I'm coming from Tinley Park where we had distribution in the middle and it's a nightmare because 
our traffic right now is good, relatively. I know some people will challenge me on that. Relatively, we have really good traffic. You start throwing trucks on that main thoroughfare, that's no good. Um, so I think distribution will expand as well, but manufacturing is what's really being talked about. And that's because of the success of Rivian, investments by Ferrero, what Grant's doing, and even the success of Bridgestone. Like we've got successful manufacturers and people are realizing if you're gonna reshore things, go back to the heart of America. And that's it, that's us. That's not gonna be our brand either. <laughs> I think somebody has already got that. Yes. <laughs> Let's go have a beer. Uh, what time is it? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, the mall. There's uh, there's activity on the mall, so that's a good thing. There are there are investors lined up that want to do something. The question again is what? Um, there's multiple groups that are trying to steer that conversation, and the city of Bloomington has an entire economic development team um, focused on that as well. Um, personally, with the housing crisis and everything else, I would like everyone to go Google a metro burb because I think that would be the best use for that building. It's where you take your Macy's and that becomes a 55 plus. You take another old store and you turn it into a 25 to 35 and in between coffee shops, bars, everything else inside city. And it'd be a great transition as a former fraternity guy to get out of my house and go right into that where I still have a house mom and my coffee and everything's taken care of. Like that'd be good for a transition plus all our transplants. And I know some people that could probably pull that off, but yeah, everybody push for a Metro bird. <laughs> Any other questions? Any online? We oh, yeah, 25 viewers online. That's good. All right. With that, there's my contact information. You've got everybody else's. If you don't got my card, get my card. Again, please meet with my staff. Um, we've got a lot more things to do. I'm just really pumped. Because I've never known what the EDC's full capacity is, but now that we've got a staff of five, we're about ready to hit it and hopefully crush last year's numbers. Thank you all for coming out.